Hello there, welcome. Like always, you know me, it's your host, Amy from Penventure. Welcome to another fun pen review on the Penventure YouTube channel. It's been a very, very nice sunny weather outside, and that gives me a very positive mindset. And I had some spare time, and I said, ooh, let's go into the Dragon's Lair, my personal fun pen collection, in order to review one very elusive fun pen, something that's from a company that is no longer with us. And it's been a fun pen that you've asked many, many times to review. And um, it's one of the biggest, if not in the top three biggest font pens in my personal font pen collection. Are you ready to see it? Let's go. I'm a huge, huge fan of Italian font pens, by now you know, and uh, nothing comes even close to the awesomeness level of this fountain pen because it is from a company that's no longer with us. That's a big bonus. It's uh, been handed over to me, the ownership of this fountain pen, by the co-founder of the Delta Pen Company, Ciro Matroni, uh, a good friend of mine and the father of Salvatore Matroni, who is the founder of Leonardo Officina Italiana. So I wanted to have this fountain pen in order to uh, take the DNA from Delta and to compare it with uh, the Leonardo DNA from our day. So I wasn't in the hobby when the Delta Pen Company closed their doors. And uh, one time when I visited Italy, uh, I met with uh, Ciro and Salvatore in uh, Naples and I've seen this fountain pen on the table of um, Ciro Matrone and I said, Ciro, please, 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 I want to have this fountain pen. Uh, and I actually purchased this fountain pen from him. And for me, it has a very, very big emotional value. Uh, above being a Delta fountain pen. And uh, let's explore how it looks, how it feels, how big it is, my thoughts regarding it, uh, a writing sample because it has a very, very interesting nib. And in the end, I'm gonna share some of my personal opinions, of course, about this fountain pen. First of all, some, uh, let's say, um, information regarding the company. Well, Delta is a very, very known pen company from Italy. It's no longer with us, it has around 40 years, if I'm not mistaken, into pen making. Taking a look at their lineup, um, I've seen that they were sort of ahead of time with celluloids, materials, uh, shapes for fountain pens, ideas, nibs, uh, etc. Too many great things that are, um, well, no longer with us. If we were to put Delta Pen Company side by side Leonardo Officina Italiana in our days, we can see a few things that are quite similar, um, nibs, sizes, uh, themes, and all of that. And this is the reason why I love to go back and to collect some Delta fountain pens in order to understand Leonardo Ficina Italiana because, um, let's say, the heritage and all the experience of pen making uh, has been um, tailored down from father to son from Ciro Matrone down to Salvatore Matrone, and uh, it is a very, very emotional bond, uh, this bridge, and uh, this is why I collect Delta fountain pens, and that's my personal choice alone. Now, let's showcase the fountain pen, because I have been um, sitting with this fountain pen in my hands ever since I've started this video, and uh, it's a very, very awesome fountain pen. Take a quick look at this. This is the Delta Roma Imperiale, one of the biggest fountain pens in my personal fountain pen collection. First of all, the box, I don't have it. Uh, and uh, from uh, pictures online, I've seen that it is a very huge oversized wood box with a bottle of ink. Anyway, this is the fountain pen that we have right here. And overall, the shape of the fountain pen, it's what we call a cigar shape with rounded ends. It is a collection focused on ancient civilizations. It came in two different sizes. We had a midi size, a smaller one, and this oversized behemoth of a fountain pen. They were made in a few different materials. The line models were made in ebonite hard rubber, three colors separate. We had this British green, if I'm not mistaken, a blue and a brown. This green pops out because we have ripples of black and green ebonite, just simply dressing the fountain pen in this very, very satisfying color. Let's zoom in and focus on the cap finial. 
it is completely round very well polished the ebonite didn't lost its shine although there is quite a few years since this fountain pen is with us moving further we have the clip which is a very very large clip for a fountain pen although there is a lot of strength in regards of this clip being able to clip uh, the fountain pen quite safe this is not that let's say um, solid when it comes to lateral movement so this is something that i'm taking good care in order not to ruin anything because it's quite hard to fix this fountain pen the overall shape of the cap is pretty simple we have uh, the fountain pen tapering in towards the finial and from the finial if we go down it starts to pick up drastically in um, diameter and this is quite a large fountain pen it's not for everyone but for me personally i love this design and the overall uh, aspect of size being that big two rings i'm not sure if this is something that has to do with the fact that this fountain pen was a prototype or chiros personal fountain pen i've seen only one of these rings but on my fountain pen i see these two rings that are made in steel and a little bit lower we have a complete sterling silver 925 cap ring with this beautiful beautiful motif that is taken from the greco-roman period actually this motif was found in the ruins of pompeii the city where uh, delta is formed or established so this is again a very nice heritage touch of delta to include in their fountain pens opposite to the clip we have right here on the back delta italy and we have roma imperiale which is the name of the model it is a screw cap one complete turn of the cap and we uncap the fountain pen and take a good good look at this nib because this is something which is a breathtaking sight this is the large 18 carat size 8 gold nib from delta ornated in a more minimalistic style from delta with this beautiful beautiful scroll motif all over the nib and we have a little heart as a breather hole on this nib we have the logo of delta on the right shoulder right here we have the nib size medium this gigantic size 8 gold nib on this gigantic size fountain pen it is powered by a gigantic handcrafted ebonite feeder very very similar to a bock um, shape although it's not that streamlined and it doesn't copy the nib that well it's a little bit further out than a bock ebonite feeder on a size 8 gold nib but i do love this uh, design because this is from uh, back in the day when delta was pushing out fountain pens and this is why I love this fountain pen so so much ergonomics and uh, ergonomics we have a very very peculiar section because this is quite a chunky one on this fountain pen I would have to say this fits the overall theme and you couldn't have a skinny section on such a big fountain pen the overall shape of the section is at the thickest point right here in the upper part of the section and it's tapering in towards the nib and this may be that for some this fountain pen will feel very very strange because actually in reality it's the other way around either the section is uh, at the thinnest point in the middle or a little bit higher in order to keep the fingers from slipping towards the nib the fact that this fountain pen is completely backwards is uh, stunning and original at the same time at least for me and in my experience with so many fountain pens threads of the capping system are not sharp at all and they are polished very very well and you can hold the fountain pen by them no problem at all then we have a small step up this is again polished and nothing nothing will um, hinder your grip even if you grip the fountain pen by that step up no problem whatsoever but being such a large fountain pen i don't think you are going to hold it by those the barrel of the fountain pen is uh, not that drastically changing in shape like the cap because it's a little bit longer and it starts at the thickest point right here tapering in towards this uh, ring right here which is very small and discreet rhodium plated and we have the 
and knob. You can unscrew this to access the filling system. Appears to be a piston, but that ratcheting sound is made by a captured converter, in my experience with Delta and Leonardo of China Italiana. It is a very, very safe and uh, let's say a very effective filling system. It's not going to go bust or anything and it is very reliable and uh, it works just like a piston. We can see that on the and knob we have numbering 0155. I'm not even sure that there is 155 fountain pens. I know this edition is sort of a limited edition, but I think the numbering was done throughout the entire collection. The smaller sizes in all three colors and then continuing with the numbering for the larger sizes in all three colors of the ebonite. So this is why we don't have any dashes out of how many or anything like this, but I think this is a limited edition. Overall, this is the fountain pen, a very, very large fountain pen, which I adore. Now let's put it side by side, other fountain pen, so you can better understand what I mean when I say a big, big fountain pen. Then stick around because we will have a writing sample with this uh, very rare size 8 gold nib from uh, Delta. And this is what I mean when I say big. Here we have the Delta Roma Imperiale next to a Lamy Safari, a Mont Blanc 1912 Delta Roma Imperiale, Momento Zero Grande Muses, Ebonite as well, Pilot Custom 912 Heritage and a Momento Zero Grande which is an exclusive to Pen Venture. As you see, this fountain pen is overlooking every single fountain pen. It's bigger than a Momento Zero Grande and it is like three centimeter larger than a uh, Mont Blanc 1912. Now let's have a look uncapped. Still rivals every single fountain pen in regards of length. Uncapped, we have a Momento Zero Grande with a size eight gold nib surpassing in regards of length even that fountain pen, although it has the size 8 gold nib as well. Kept like so, the fountain pen measures 165 millimeters. Unkept from the tip of the nib to the end knob, we have 145 millimeters. If we post this fountain pen, now that you would need to post it, it has 183 millimeters in between the end and the tip of the nib. Closed like so, the fountain pen is weighing 50 grams and unkept in writing position and completely filled with ink, the fountain pen is weighing 33 grams. And that is the definition of an oversized fountain pen. Now, I think it's time to ink up uh, this beauty and let's give it a try on a very interesting paper. Hmm, what ink should I use? I don't know. Uh, wait just a minute. Hmm, I haven't used Leonardo Sepia for a long, long time. Clicky noise, that means that the piston is completely in the overhead position. Let's wipe the section clean, fresh page, and let's give it a try. Um, Delta, Roma, Imperiale. We have the nib, this is the 14 karat gold G, size 8, and this is a medium point, and we have the ink, this is Leonardo Sepia, and the paper is Tomoe River paper. 52 GSM. In regards of the ink flow, I would bet this is a very, very wet writer. Here is a pass and here is a double pass. And one of the things that I love about Italian fountain pens is the fact that they are super, super wet. Or at least they can be, or if not, we can make them normal figure of eights and I would say this is a skinny medium in my opinion it's not that large I have here on hand a Leonardo size 8 gold nib and uh, I think ah home run this is a medium as well now let's have a look this is the Leonardo it is a skinny medium on the Delta Roma Imperiale versus 
the Leonardo. Now let's have some flex in regards of this nib. I would say it has some flex, but uh, it's a no-no. Um, I wouldn't go as far as using uh, a Delta size 8 gold nib for flex because it's not going to work properly. It has some give, but you shouldn't use this uh, rare nib and this rare fountain pen in order to press on the nib and to risk uh, getting the nib bent or anything like this. Now let's give it a try with the good old sentence that every reviewer is using just to test out and to see if there are problems with the snips or anything. And we have, and I will try to be more fancy and flourishing, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Altogether, it's a very nice fountain pen, but it's not for everyone. It is big to the point of not being able to carry this fountain pen with you because you don't have something like a pen case that you can fit it in. I wouldn't see this fountain pen being used on extended periods of writing because you will have your fingers cramping. Hmm. How should I say this? Well, the section shape is a little bit odd and it's girthy and it is not that, let's say, popular to what we have today as a section for such big fountain pens. And just, just to show you what you can find on a Leonardo at this very moment. We have a section which is tested and uh, refined and it is not that large and it has this uh, flaring out right here and that helps a lot. I would say this uh, kind of, um, let's say, hmm, features of Delta Fountain Pants are something that are not perfect, but they are original. You cannot find them anymore and that is one of the things that I appreciate about this Fountain Pen, if you believe it. The nib. Well, the performances of Delta Fountain Pens are something very, very unique because they don't make nibs like this anymore. The nibs run a little bit true to the size. So medium, just like you've seen, it's quite close to medium. The Leonardo runs a lot more wet and um, a lot more bigger in regards of the riding width. So a medium is uh, quite a fat medium. The profile of the Ebonite feeder is different as well. On the Leonardo, it's much more beefy and uh, on the Delta, it's much more narrow and streamlined. And uh, the nib of the Delta has feedback, which is something that's not that common today with Leonardo. And I've tested quite a few uh, Delta nibs and they're pretty similar and original. So if you have a chance to try a Delta nib, you should. Delta Roma Imperialim, a very impressive fountain pen. Just like I told you, it's not for everyone. I love the material. I love the shape of the fountain pen. I love the emotional connection that I have with this fountain pen. What I don't like about it is the fact that this clip is a little bit unstable in regards of the lateral movement and actually moving for so much time there is a sort of a ding that formed uh, under this wheel uh, from the constant moving uh, freely. And um, I should be very careful with this fountain pen in regards of the clip. They are rare fountain pens. I've seen them selling very rarely and they increased in pricing a lot, especially the biggest versions, this ones. And there are a few demonstrator versions, which if I'm not mistaken, they are exclusive to some retailers those can fetch up in upwards of a uh, thousand and three hundred a thousand and five hundred euros for sure put it on the list in order to be collected because you won't uh, regret at all they keep their value since the delta pen company is not longer with us so there isn't any problems in regards of the aspect of purchasing the fountain pen and actually selling it along later down uh, for much less. That's not the case with this uh, fountain pen from Delta. And pretty much that sums up my review for the Delta Roma Imperiale, a fountain pen that you've been asking for a few years for me to review, and uh, this is how big it is. That is why I 
love this fountain pen because I had the same expression on my face when I seen this fountain pen on Chiro's desk and uh, I managed to be the lucky one who got it as a part of my personal fountain pen collection. Thank you for uh, spending this time with me on the Pen Venture YouTube channel. I hope you like my content. I hope you like this video. And if you find this video useful, if uh, it makes you uh, ask some questions regarding Delta Roma Imperiale, don't forget to comment down below. Let me know what you want to actually find out regarding this fountain pen. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm to reach out to many more just like you. Scrolling down below, you'll find the links for our website, our social media accounts, my email, phone number, anything and everything that you may need to get in contact with me. And I know that some of you that are watching right now are not subscribed yet, so if you want to support the growth of the PenVenture YouTube channel, subscribe. Click there, turn the notification bell on, be part of the family, and you will be notified whenever we have new content. If you missed out on our content, I'm going to leave you this video right here. Click and enjoy. As always, it's me, your host, Amy, and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe, bye-bye.